And joining me now is the former Prime Minister of Israel, Naftali Bennett. Uh, Prime Minister, thank you for being with us. I want to ask you, I was just going back and reading something today. You laid out after October 7th the manner in which you thought this war could be conducted, the best, most humanitarian way in which to do it. How do you assess the way the current government, Netanyahu's government, is conducting the war that we have right now? I think the war has been uh, conducted uh, very well by the IDF and uh, by the government. Uh, I think uh, we're methodically um, fighting and uh, capturing and killing Hamas terrorists who conducted the savage attack of uh, October 7th. And uh, we need more time and we're going to finish the job. The rest of the world is very concerned about the civilian casualties that are the numbers just go up and up. And I know you pro the Israeli government disputes some of the numbers, but something around 18,000 civilian casualties within the Gaza Strip. Do you believe more could or needs to be done to protect the Palestinian civilians during the course of this war? I think uh, Israel is doing everything, um, more than any other country almost ever has, has done to protect the civilians of, uh, of the enemy uh, territory. But uh, at the end of the day, Hamas is uh, so determined to have its own people killed uh, while fighting us, uh, th there's nothing that can stop them from, from doing it. I mean, we know that they actually shoot at uh, areas where civilians are trying to run away or evacuate themselves. We know that they uh, hide their weapons behind civilians, within schools, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we're just doing our very best. The ratio right now is uh, much better than it was at the beginning, but we have to complete the job. I want to ask you, early in the war, President Biden warned Israel, sort of a public comment that got of a lot of attention, the idea to not make the same mistakes that he felt that the United States did after 9-11. There's been so many comparisons between October 7th and 9-11. I wonder generally, do you feel like the government heeded those warnings? And, and, and how prevalent is that line of thinking about not being consumed by the rage that you feel in the conduct of everything that's happened after October 7th? Jared, that's a great question. We're not focused on our rage. We're focused on preventing the next time or the next uh, massacre. Here's the thing. These people are telling us explicitly that if we don't kill them, they're going to conduct more uh, attacks against us. They, they say it explicitly. They're not saying mm -hmm. no, we want peace or anything like that. So they're telling us, essentially, we're going to continue these sort of massacres. So... And, and this is not at the other side of the, the world. This is not Afghanistan, thousands of miles away from America. This is on our border. Right. And it happened just a, a couple of months ago. To, to the idea that when this war is over, you're still going to be living next door to these people. I, we've seen images and videos of Palestinian men, you know, stripped down, blindfolded, folks who have been detained by Israeli troops. I think a lot about this idea that you can win militarily against Hamas, but do you worry about the way Palestinians have been treated both in Gaza and in the West Bank, where you might be creating the next generation of the people who will continue this fight against you, that you can win kind of tactically on the ground in Gaza, but lose strategically by a manner in which you're conducting a war and a manner in which you're trying to keep your people safe and end up creating more people who hate you? Well, I think... Uh... The massacre of October 7th proved that the approach of, uh, you know, being uh, generous and uh, strengthening their economy uh, did not work. I'm not saying that we want to uh, destroy their economy or anything of that sort, but somehow the uh, regular logics that apply to you and me uh, do not apply to Hamas because they attacked us without any provocation. Uh, there was no... There's no territorial dispute down there. Right. They're not saying we deserve a piece of land or anything. They just say, we want to destroy you. That's what their charter says, states. So I think, actually, the best way to unroot the, this hate is a, a full and total defeat. Um, I, I want to talk about what happens next. There, uh, this idea that the prime minister said, I guess, uh, either today or yesterday, your time, that we're at the beginning of the end of what this war is going to be. What do you think the ending looks like? Who controls Gaza when this is all said and done? I mean, you suggested long before the war the idea that Gaza should be controlled functionally by Egypt. Do you think that's something that could still be on the table? I mean, how, how do you govern a Gaza that still exists after this war is over? 
Yeah, well, first of all, it ends by uh, either killing or capturing all of the Hamas operatives and the, especially the leadership. Secondly, creating a buffer, uh, security buffer zone of about one and a half kilometers deep into Gaza to move them away from our border. Uh, third, we don't, indeed, we don't want to govern them. Uh, no Israeli has the desire to run their lives. So what I believe is the right thing is to set up a interim uh, technocratic government of uh, competent folks, either from Gaza and or from uh, other Abraham Accord states, and to run the country for a few years until we can set a, a permanent structure in place. Uh, you mentioned the Abraham Accords. Before October 7th, Israel had been making a ton of progress in the region, sort of make, setting up relationships with countries whom you used to not uh, have any kind of relationship with. I wonder how big of a setback you think this war has been to that effort, which I know you were involved in in the past, and whether you'll be able to find those partners who want to be involved in the governance of Gaza after all this is said and done given the way the war is going and continues to go for perhaps some more time still? Yeah, so it depends on the results. Uh, the the way to reignite the Abraham Accords is to fully eradicate Hamas. If we do that, uh, that's a huge boost to the whole region because all of the region uh, of the reasonable countries, the Abraham Accord countries, are vehemently against radical Islam. Once we do that, I think we can uh, resume discussions. If we get uh, quagmired uh, without being able to get the job done, that'll slow everything down. All right. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, I appreciate your time and your expertise on all this. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.